Hi there, good afternoon. Wilhelm Swart here from a sunny South Africa. As you can see, uh, I'm in a home location still, so so we still um, are fighting the pandemic, and from time to time we go into um, isolation periods. And yeah, so but uh, everybody's working, everybody's active. We're all healthy. Um, we're blessed to be able to to continue and to be very very busy. So it's it's very exciting. Uh, by now you should have known that you know we started with this webinar series uh, right in the middle of of the you know in the, the lockdown. And, and, and really as a focus to basically deal with with this, um, you know, in the pandemic that we were in and sort of to try and use the time to upskill and cross skill and learn new um, methodologies and on how to to work in this new um, environment. So, so we've gone through a whole range of like initially the plan was nine events and we are already up to 11. And so you could see we we started with like things about, you know, how do I bring the yield up and down in a plant? You know, if 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 the requirements to scale up or down is is quite fast or how do we predict, for example, a failure is some of the things that is quite relative. A lot of the people are now working um, remotely. So so you know, how do I do data prediction? How do I, if I don't have that amount of eyes and ears on site, you know, how would I do that? And so we had sessions on like MS in the cloud and how to quickly deploy that. You know, if I have to basically, you know, complex environment and I want to save cost or save energy or save, uh, you know, chemical dosing or whatever, you know, so some of the sessions ar around APC was all about that. And so on, we've been going through these, uh, through this uh, phase. Also things like, you know, you know, if I've got process variability, you know, how would I do that? And, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting production, but sometimes I'm using double the energy or same same machine, same same environment, but one plant delivers double the amount of throughput than the other. You know, and that was sort of some of the focuses of, of um, you know, this um, um, multivariate analysis that we did on the 24th of June. And I, I mentioned that because you can refer back to them. We had sessions on automation, like, you know, can you continue with automation in this remote phase? And, you know, if I, for example, a lot of clients now have the requirement to be more remote, to basically access plants more remotely and see, you know, you know, the, the drag lines, the you know, conveyor systems, pump systems, crushers, whatever remotely. So how would you do it and how do you orchestrate the team to be effective? And so on the 8th of July, we did one on Aspen Enterprise Insight of how you would do that and, and so on. So, you know, coming closer to today. So today, the next two weeks, we focus very much again on, on MES and more detail. I'll talk about that a little bit later, but we're also going to simulation and digital twins later on in the series. And so, yep, on popular demand, um, the, the, the webinar series, which is every Wednesday, is really being expanded, you know, and carrying on. So really the key theme is we are constantly are talking around these solutions that we provide is um, um, uh, in, in foresight operational technology groups. So we're a group of, you know, multidiscipline engineers, you know, and we provide all these solutions, you know, mainly around control systems or MES systems or advanced process control, control systems or asset performance management or simulation systems, you know, and, and really so, Every week we take another topic, you know, but, you know, so that is just the technology. I think the key thing which is more important is the value, like, you know, what's the value for the client in this, you know, this VUCA environment, this, uh, you know, uncertain, volatile period that we are in at the moment. And so, so a lot of focus on less, less people on site, so safety plays a very big role in how can we use, for example, you know, AP, um, APM's asset performance management and automation to be, get that better. How do we get it green? So how do we save energy? How do we um, run the plants with a lower um, um, carbon usage, you know, or make it more sustainable? Very, very topical. Everybody is talking about that. Things about looking at the reliability. So, you know, make sure that the assets is available, that we don't have unexpected failures. If we did have a shutdown, that the duration of the downtime is not too long. You know, um, cut maintenance costs, very big thing. We've been very much involved in the last year now with some of the largest mining clients here to deploy um, prescriptive predictive um, maintenance technologies to predict a failure um, well in advance and, you know, dealing with that. Or, you know, running your facility, your manufacturing plant or your mine, you know, um, closer because some of the mines are now, or some of the facilities are now scaling up or they're saying, listen, I'm going to just run one stream, but I want to push the production. Some guys were shut down for two or three months and now they're really really want to push the OEE to the maximum. So how would you do that? Some of the things that we're focusing on, or for example, using a APC to improve the yield, you know, so, you know, get the energy consumption of a boiler down or like I said, you know, or, 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 
or consumables and so forth and, and you know various other things process variable variability optimization um, you know is all the type of things that 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 the clients are looking for and they want to um, have us do it agili agility and, and based with agility and being able to to react quite fast and do it in you know sprints or waves and so really that focus on also fast engineering be, um, and plays a very very big role in it so if you look at us um, at foresight operational technologies you know really how we see it is it's the you know we 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 we, we access to the data most industrial sites or mines have been collecting data for the last five ten sometimes 20 years but only been using a very low amount of it so we combine that with technology and then we go and look at the clients you know and their bus basically business requirements or business models and we come up with you know these new business models of really bringing um, value to the client so the type of technologies that we bring in is is all the things like for example um you know, uh, um, IO, IOT or, or advanced analytics or multivariate analysis, simulation and planning technologies, VR and augmented reality uh, technologies, the interfacing um, um, to uh, SAP or to various other um, ERP type systems. So really all the four IR technologies is, is which what we basically use to bring value to the clients. Now, um, these technologies we bring to our customers through really three groups um, or three companies inside the, the Foresight OT cluster. You know, so we are about you know, 80 engineers and, um, um, and, and so, so the first group is, is Age um, uh, Technologies, which is an automation company and really they focus on, on deploying instrumentation, connecting it through industrial networks, putting PLC control DCS systems in, um, you know, providing control of the plants and also safety solutions with it, and then putting SCADA on top, be it the SciTech or a WinCC or, or whatever, or a InTouch or whatever. So they are a multi-vendor um, automation solution provider for, you know, Snyder, Siemens, AVB, various Rockwell, various others. And, and yeah, so also today focusing more and more also on, on you know, IoT cloud connectivity. So um, devices that basically can get onto a 4G or 5G and pull into the automation system system and also um, you know uh, uh, cyber security so being able to trawl inside the industrial network see where all the industrial switches PLCs are IP devices are and see where the vulnerabilities are these are the type of things that um, age technologies as an automation uh, as an asset automation uh, company focus on and then we've got another uh, company in the group which is simulation engineering technologies a group of about 26 25 industrial engineers also here in Johannesburg and very much focused on you know they, they focus on mining and industrial process and rail simulation but not only just that you know so it's mainly constraint simulations that they you know they're looking for for optimum optimization for but also you know planning and scheduling simulation and the control of that so are you are you planning to the optimum point and how do i control that you know, running multiple um, uh, um, um versions of of that control and then further they look at you know transportation optimization where are slotting um you know logistic optimization and simulation is all some of the disciplines that that group um, is involved with uh, under yaku and then the third group is basically the group that i work with is blue sp we focus very much on um, asset optimization. So we are a Aspentech, a reseller and an ISP, and we provide solutions um, for, for, for them. Um, you know, and, and really our key focus is the transformation. You know, so, so from the automation system, we generate quite a lot of data. So we, we, we focus on you know, using technology to transform that, that data into information with some of, you know, with, you know, MES systems or whatever, and then transforming it and, and bringing more value to it, you know, so um, um, turning some of the data more into wisdom, knowledge, uh, intelligence um, through, you know, some of the things that I'm going to speak about um, right now. So if we take a, well, so this, this week, for example, and next week we're diving specifically into the discipline of MES and the more higher order MES functionality. So previously, about three weeks ago, we talked about MES in the cloud and the visualization and the aggregation of the data. But now we're going a bit more underneath the bonnet and more heavier type topics. So we'll talk, you know, you'll hear today the guys talk about um, uh, 
topics like, like for example, delay accounting or downtime, OEE, so oper um, uh, overall equipment effectiveness. So how do you how do you use downtime um, to improve that or um, uh, uh, operational reporting or operational log sheets is also a theme of today. Next week, they'll talk a little bit about also um, Waybridge type solutions. We'll talk today um, about a batching system. So um, uh, production report management solutions, you know, and also next week they will dive much deeper into uh, metal accounting, mass balancing, water balancing. So, you know, some of the key core MES functionalities that's being covered this week uh, and next week. But just uh, maybe a last view to us on, on Blue SP on, on the company. So yeah, we see ourselves as a very agile engineering company, multidiscipline. So, you know, so I told you before, there's we supported by industrial engineers from um, set and automation guys from auto, uh, from from age. But yeah, we are a bunch of mechanical engineers, chemical engineers, data scientists, um, electronic, um, uh, electrical guys, you know, uh, and, and, and really we use Aspen Tech as our road model. So Aspen Tech has been around for now 37 years, developing this really uh, um, uh, brilliant technology and today very much being enhanced with more embedded, you know, machine learning and analytics and AI with these technologies that's been there for, for many years. You know, and so we, 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 we take it to market and, and, and provide solutions for our clients. So the type of technologies that, that um, we take to market and that we get from Aspen Tech um, is really there's, there's sets of design software. So if I was going to um, um, design a new plant, how would I basically, you know, make it the most uh, efficient, the most effective? How would I make it uh, a very, very cost effective, deliver it on time and, and very, very green? And so there's various technologies that helps you to push the boundaries of if you had to build a new plant and you have to cost it and if you have to run it, how would you do it? So, you know, simulating the process, similar, you know, process optimization, model backed um, type solutions. So all under, under the design software. So things like HiSys, Aspen One, um, some of our clients use that quite extensively. Then there's a set of software that, that we focus on. How do we run a plant better? So how do I operate it to its limits? And so we had some sessions on, you know, you take 500,000 tax, put it in historian, aggregate that data. The top, the theme of today, you know, bringing more value to that data with MES. And, you know, we'll talk enough about that today, but also working a bit on the connectivity. And if you have very complex environments, we have like 30 PID loops and you're struggling to balance the plant or these plant sectors sections is working against each other. Um, you know, there was two or three sessions specifically just on that to planning and scheduling software as well. And the third one not covered today, but it's like, you know, once I you know design it and operate it, how do I maintain it? So uh, there's been quite a few sessions on like using technology like prescriptive predictive maintenance, you know, and predicting a failure of a crusher or a pump or a, or a conveyor belt three weeks or four weeks in advance through a pattern recognition in the data. And what would you do with that? You know, so refer back to those or things like a multivariate analysis. You know, I have, I produce, I don't get the throughput, I don't get the quality, what's the cause of it? And I, the data is just too complex to visualize with normal Excel sheets or whatever. So there we use um, PLS multivariate analysis. And there's also simulation software associated with, with how we can figure out where the, the pressure points are. So I think that's enough on, on as an introductory <clears throat> on what we do as a group and, and all the exciting things that we do. I'm going to now hand over to Daryl, um, OP, which is our solutions um, sales manager at, at Blue SP, to tell us a little bit about himself and to introduce the speakers of the day. Over to you, Daryl. Yeah, thanks, Wilhelm. And as Wilhelm said, my name is Daryl OP, and I'll be your host this afternoon for the session entitled MES Enabling Manufacturing Optimization. So, a little about me I graduated from WITS with a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. I have over 20 years experience in the mining and manufacturing industry. We have been involved in various electrical automation and digitalization projects and solutions of all sorts of shapes and sizes. And currently I'm the solution sales general manager here at BSP. To take you through the detail, we have two extremely experienced engineers. First, we have Henny Jacobs. He's our professional services director at BSP. He has a degree in electrical engineering and has been working with, with Aspen Tech and Aspen Tech products for the best part of 25 years. Then we also have Johan Kruger. Johan is a qualified chemical engineer who started his career with a 10 year stint at the Atomic Energy Board. He followed this with a 30 year um, stint in the petrochemical industry and he has now been working with Bursby for 12 years. 
So I think you, you probably need a calculator to work out how many years experience your hun has. Um, just before we get going, some housekeeping. Everyone will be on mute. So if you have any questions, please write them in the comment section. Um, I think you all know how this works by now. We will answer them at the end. Um, if we don't get to them, we'll, we'll contact you separately. But please take this opportunity to tap into this vast bucket of experience. Um, so you know, take advantage of it. And also just please remember that this event has been recorded. So the agenda today revolves around four main areas um, that Wilhelm alluded to a little bit earlier. Firstly, MES data connection and aggregation between PLC and SCADAs and your DCS and your ERP SAP system and your LIM system. You, you really need seamless data transfer between your various systems. Then we'll see how MES downtime and delay accounting helps to improve the OE of your mining and manufacturing site. And how simply this can be implemented. This will be followed by MES operational log sheet and and operational reporting scenarios. Then last, we will look at Aspen Tech production record management. Um, this is for keeping complete and accurate tracking of your batching processes, um, followed by the Q&A session. So with that, Henny and Johan, please take it away. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you, Daryl. Um, thank you for the introduction. You can hear me there, Daryl. Is everything fine? Yes, we can. Yep. Right, so as, as Daryl said, we want to give some uh, overviews of uh, how we use the, the MES. Um, I will do basically the first uh, overview of the connection and then I will hand over to Johan, which will take us in detail on, on the downtime and log sheets, and then we will return for the APRM. Um, let me just go on here to the next. All right, so if we start, so I will. I think we need to start and have a look and, and, and just to understand what our customers need and what they want. Um, and, it, and it needs to be it needs to be clear. We want to understand how we can fulfill making sure that they can run the operations in, in, in a more optimized way. We've got various different departments in, in any business. We, we're looking at financial departments. We're looking at services. We're looking at planning. We're looking at the, the, the lab systems, but all of these departments has got the same goal in mind, and that is how do we collectively work towards optimizing the process? How do we increase the profit of, of what we are trying to do? Um, the, and and you, you can also sum it up in a, in, a, in a different way by saying we want to have a sustainable business that makes profit. So customers need and want to run their operation in this optimized way. They want to have insight into what's happening with their process and they want to know how they can improve. There's a continuous drive of improving, improving how you work and what you do and how you can save money. So all of that is requiring data that we need to put in. Um, they also want to determine how they can improve it, how do they can make decisions um, and they want to make these decisions in real time or near real time. They want to make sure they can track the performance. Um, we have seen in this in this last few months on how our working environment and how we need to look at stuff changes quite a lot. Um, so we want to access this data anywhere, anytime. And, and not only that, we want to have a look at the relevant data that's associated that helps us to drive towards this goal of, of making sure we we running this uh, production in an optimized way. Um, we, the customers also wants to look at the single platform and and view this data in a uh, in a correlated uh, uh, um, correlated data in a single platform. And they also want to be able then to make sure they can do root cause analysis. This, this might not be all of the requirements, but this is certainly some of the requirements that plays a big role in, in, in running your business. So if we have a look at, at uh, why then MES, um, different departments have their own solutions. We've got very strong LIMS functionalities. We've got um, uh, systems that focuses on how do you run this, this your laboratories and making sure you get all the quality uh, or analyze the data for quality. 
you want to look at the plant control systems. Um, but Adam has only mentioned some of them in the, in, in the first few slides, but we've got a, advanced control systems that make sure we operate this plant in safe guidelines. We've got all way bridges, but captures is the raw material, the final products, internal movements that's happening in a plant. Um, we've got ERP systems like SAP, Sage, SysPro. All of these uh, ERP systems is help combining the, the financials of how do we run this operation in an optimized way. All of them very good uh, solutions. But then why the MES? The MES is an, an, a means of trying to have a look and how do we analyze our actual plant performance, incorporating our quality and plant data. Uh, how much energy, for instance, that we use? We want to be able to measure that and see that in a central location. We want to turn this plant data into usable KPIs. Um, that what is happening on the plant? How can we monitor the plant? execute product manufacturing according to the customer specifications. We want to be able to, uh, for the order that's placed in the ERP system for, for a certain product, we want to produce on spec, but we need to understand and see what is that specification. So we need to bring it into a place, uh, into the MES, to be able to execute this production of our uh, uh, products uh, according to the specification. Um, having this data in a central location, it enables us to do root cause analysis using, using very sophisticated um, statistical process functionalities, SPC functionalities, to be able to have a look and get insight into what is happening on our plants. We want to look at this SPC also not only at history data, but in real time. Uh, one of the aspects that we want to address later to the, in this session is the downtime and OEE which is another way of getting the data that would work for us to be able to see how we can improve efficiency. Stock inventory. Um, a, a lot of these systems can handle the, the stock inventory, but we want to know how much raw material that we consume, for instance, um, how much that we receive over road and rail uh, on the way bridges, um, how much product that we produce, and what did we sell, how much did we sell, and that we then send it out according to specific sales orders by weighing it on wave bridges and understand what's happening with our, our stock. So the MES is also providing us with the means not only to keep track of what's happening now, but it, it's turning our history data into knowledge so that we can make better decisions and understand what we want to do with the process. If we look a bit on um, how we want to do this. Um, you look at first, you want to collect all the data from the different sources uh, and make it available in the central database. We want to integrate the plant control system data. Um, you will, I mean, we all have got PLCs or DCS or uh, um, edge devices that is helping us to be able to run and control our plants. We want to get that information and make sense out of it and combine that, for instance, with what is happening in quality. Um, and we also want to make sure we can pull that in and what is happening on, on places like the way bridges. So if we bring in the plant control, the way bridge, our lab data, which is very, very important to understand if we are making the product according to the specs, uh, bring that into a central location where we can execute various calculations, do, do aggregations according to business rules, and employ best practices on how we want to make and combine these events and into data. Um, visualizing, looking at various reports and KPI dashboards from the centralized location to be able to measure our plant performance. And the MES is facilitating us to share this information between different applications. We also use various analytics like batch analysis, I uh, will show later a little bit on the APRM, uh, which stands for Aspen Production Record Manager, which helps us to combine data that's relevant to one another in a single way, which is easily uh, expandable and easy, easily visualized using the APRM tools. Alerts and notifications, what is happening on the plan, um, combining that with comments, uh, and saving that as part of trends and reports is giving us insight 
and giving us a flow and collaboration between the different teams on, on certain data that's happening in the plant. Various SPC charts like histograms, Pareto charts, all are built in the MES and all part of all the new technologies like Aspen One Process Explorer, which is a new front end, uh, which is also the, the look and feel and the central point for all the applications for Aspen Tech, which is helping us to be able to search for patterns uh, on one or more tags. And uh, it's also very important. We're not going to go into that much uh, in, in this session, uh, but uh, very powerful techniques to be able to look in, in, into data. MES plays a very important role in our business and, and in your business as well. As a customer, we, you want to make sure that you get value out of all the different uh, uh, data from your plant. Uh, and one of the first aspects that we want to basically look at is the MES downtime and, and in OEE. Um, and for, for that part of this discussion, I actually want to give over to, to Johan Kruger, which is, uh, like the, Daryl said, very experienced uh, uh, chemical engineer that's, that can give us some insight in the MES downtime. So Johan, at this stage, I'm going to give over, um, over to you to take us through this uh, downtime. Yeah, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I will be handling mainly these two topics. Obviously, we can keep busy for the whole day on these two topics, but due to time pressure, I will just scratch the surface. So what I'll be talking about, uh, first of all, I'll give a quick overview of something we call Blue Web. Uh, and the reason I touch on that is because that's the framework within which the other two applications uh, is running. Uh, then we're going to talk about Blue Downtime and the Aspen One Process Explorer OEE functionality. And finally, we're going to talk about electronic log sheets. All right, so Blue Web for Aspen One Process Explorer. Um, was originally developed as something we called EasyWeb uh, in the early 2000s as a collection of JavaScript routines that allowed us to uh, design pages and menus within the, uh, at that stage, with the Aspen Tech Web 21, uh, without doing a lot of coding. Uh, so the pages and the menus are mainly set up within the database. Uh, Blue Web uh, for A1PE has been uh, an, is an ad adaptation of these routines for Aspen One Process Explorer using the HTML5 standard. Uh, the importance of that is that it requires no installation on a client. There's no objects or um, uh, COM objects that needs to be installed. Everything is installed on the web server. Right, right. So we've got we've added a new uh, icon on the uh, A1PE homepage, and if you click on that, it takes you to the uh, Blue Web homepage, uh, where you where the menus that we've configured in the database are exposed to the uh, user. Um, Right, and there we've also got sub menus available, uh, uh, possible, and even sub menus, uh, sub menus of sub menus. Right, and when we select a, a menu item, it takes us to that specific application. So here we've selected downtime and edit, and it brought us to the blue downtime uh, homepage. We will be talking about blue down, da, downtime next. Um, but each of these uh, selections we do is opened as a tab within the uh, Blue Web homepage. Right, so that is a quick overview of uh, Blue Web. We will now move on to Blue Downtime. And again, like we've done previously in this session, the question is why do we want, do we want to do downtime and OEE? And obviously, 
in the end, we want to improve profitability. Uh, we want to maximize productivity. And we can do that in a, a number of ways through the metrics we get out of downtime, which gives us availability, and then the OEE uh, measurements, which give us, uh, which includes performance and quality. Um, and the ways that we improve is, for example, driving down in inventories because we have more trust in our processes. Obviously, with the current situation in the world, people are rethinking their, think their uh, thinking about just-in-time and minimum uh, inventories, but still. Uh, we can maximize productivity by identifying uh, repeating problems and uh, trying to improve our cycle times. Um, right, and then also it can help us um, uh, identify the reasons why we've got production losses. Um, and in the end, a very important thing for any company is increase customer satisfaction. If we improve throughput and quality, obviously we can create satisfied customers. Uh, and then, obviously, a, a system like this will allow us to measure data and to take de uh, decisions based on uh, consistent metrics. Right, and if I've selected blue downtime, uh, and I get into the home page, uh, the selection menu allows me to filter for equipment and event, events in a number of ways. So here we can filter based on location and down to equipment level. Uh, on this slide, we've selected the site uh, uh, area and then a section within that area. Uh, and it will give us all equipment uh, for that uh, selection. Uh, we can also select the start and end time for which I want events. Um, I can filter based on event status. Normally, we don't show the deleted events. Uh, you don't want to clutter your uh, screen with events that's already been improved, approved or finalized. So I, can fil I filter them out, but I can also show them. Uh, and similarly, with uh, the selection, I can... Uh, include events that's got no uh, equipment that's got not got no events like this one for this time period there's no events but it's still shown here uh, or i can exclude equipment that uh, has events so if i were to uh, select uh, tick that and say uh, search it would remove all of these that's got events and the importance of that will become clear later and then we can also say only include running events. That's events that started, but it's not yet ended. And then on this, uh, in this window, we can select the action we want to take when we click on any of these uh, rows. So I can just view or I can edit, change status, split event, um, or create a manual event. And we we'll talk about uh, most of these in the next few slides. The important thing is that the system will allow the actions that can be selected to be limited to users that's, that are authorized for that specific actions. And it's based on a role-based security. So we set up roles and the security is based on those roles, the authorization, and then we assign users to each role. Right, and when we want to edit the event and all of the uh, screens that are following, I've got the exact same layout, um, but based on what we want to do, some of the fields are not available. So when we edit the event, typically we can change the end time. It might be that it was entered incorrectly. We can specify another shift that was on duty when this happened. Um, in the event information area, and this is where typic, most of this is where typically the traditional downtime monitoring uh, data uh, is captured. The category uh, typically users would yeah, configure um, 
things like production, electrical, mechanical, instrumentation, and so on. Uh, the problems uh, is a drop-down list per equipment or per plant uh, that's configured as a standard list of, of problems that the user can select from. So that we don't have that situation where uh, we get different spelling and we get people calling things different. Uh, we can now sort on specific problems because it's consistent. And then we do allow the user to give some uh, free format text uh, to explain what has happened. The comment is mainly intended for when someone changes something, uh, to give a comment there. And if he has changed the value and he applies it, uh, that change will be locked in a, an event lock. Uh, it will say, for example, uh, user John Doe has changed the end time from this to that value um, at, at a specific time, which is the lock time, and the comment will be locked with it. And then here at the bottom, uh, we allow for each event a four level cascading uh, uh, classification to be, uh, be specified. And the intention is mainly that we use this for the OEE type of uh, um, logging. So uh, level one would be our typical OEE type. Down into more specific um, reasons for each one of those time types. And, and here we've got failures, and then we can drill down on what types of failures uh, up to four levels. Right, to split the delay, uh, we can, we allow existing delays to be split into two uh, distinct events and initially both events uh, will have the same data except for the start and end times and we do that by specifying uh, an end time that falls between the existing start and end times uh, and it will then split it into two events uh, and user can then for each event specify their own its own uh, information on the event information and classification. The question would be why would we want to do that? We often get this situation in a plant uh, where a plant has gone down because of a, a, a motor failure, for example, um, and it's the uh, intention is that it will be down uh, for four hours and we've been waiting for a long time to do some electrical work on the same plant and because we've got that opportunity now uh, we do it, and then after four hours, the mechanical work is done, but we need another hour for the electrical work. So we can split the five hour down, downtime into a four hour and one hour uh, section with each with its own reasons. Right, we also allow manual events to be added. Um, I'm talking about uh, capturing events automatically in a to be added, in which case the um, user can now specify a start and end time uh, and all the other information that we've seen in the previous slides. Um, what I want to emphasize here, and this is a new wish uh, addition to, to Blue Downtime, is this do for all. So some actions is possible on multiple uh, equipment or events. Um, and this is uh, specifically been introduced for mining customers. Here we've got a situation where people are mining and now it's time to do blasting. So all of the equipment now has to uh, be removed from the site before we can do the blasting. Now you don't want to go into all of the equipment in that area and one by one uh, take them offline for the blasting period. So we can select that area. In this case, we've got West Mine and we can say for all the equipment that's currently assigned to West Mine, uh, we want to 
uh, add a downtime event and the reason uh, that we would give you a, or, or in the OEE would be blasting. It also allows us now to uh, approve multiple events at the same time rather than having to go into them one by one. Right, and then the event status. Um, by default, an event will be created as an open event. That means that it, data can still be freely changed by users that are uh, authorized. Typically, that this would be the operator um, in the control. Normally, some manager would look at these events and he will approve them. Once it's approved, it, the, most users will be prevented from still chain data here. Um, and then, uh, normally, you would have your uh, reliability group looking at this and they might say, okay, no, we don't agree with this uh, data. We want to change it to something else. Uh, and after that's been done, they can make it final. And after it's been made final, nobody can change it anymore. It becomes permanent. Uh, information. Now it might also be, especially if we've got um, automatically locked equipment that for some reason we've uh, uh, locked uh, an event uh, in, uh, incorrectly and in that case we can mark it as deleted. Right, and then uh, a quick discussion on automatic uh, uh, capturing. Typically, we would like look at specific values within uh, the database. Uh, and in this case, we said that if that value uh, becomes one and that value becomes one, we start the event. And if both of them are zero, uh, or if any one of them is zero, uh, it will stop the event. Uh, in this case, um, this specific tag here has been created to indicate whether we've got an off time within the mine shift. This is a scenario where there's two 10 hour shifts with uh, two hour intervals between each uh, shift where, where they've got off time. Um, this tag for this specific equipment uh, determines whether there is already a downtime or event running when this Events. So therefore, if it's off time and there's no uh, current event running, it will create an off time event. And here we see an example of that. So uh, from four to six each morning and each afternoon, we've got a two hour off time uh, event. We can also uh, for most of the fields that we populate, like for example, the code or the uh, category or for the problem or for even for the classifications. If there are signals available that allow us to automatically detect what that is, uh, we can capture that signal and automatically populate the, um, the data in our uh, downtime event. Right, so that is, uh, the discussion on blue downtime. Uh, we will now briefly discuss the Aspen One Process Explorer uh, OEE functionality. Uh, it is standard functionality with Aspen One Process Explorer. Um, and what the overall equipment effectiveness or OEE does, it expands on traditional downtime monitoring uh, by adding performance and quality as metrics. And we'll, we will see a graphical example of that in the next uh, screen. Um, now, there's a number of advantages uh, or, and or differences between traditional downtime monitoring and OEE. Uh, in most implementations of traditional downtime monitoring, the focus is on uh, which department or discipline uh, is uh, responsible for an event. Uh, whereas OEE promotes a team approach. Um, 
OEE also provides us with one set of metrics that indicates the effectiveness of the equipment. I've been to many plants where um, people have been so that they can uh, combine, for example, downtime with the performance of the plant or with the quality uh, of the products. And uh, the final comment is that blue downtime, which we've just discussed, uh, can provide, provide most of the data that's required for the Aspen One Process Explorer OEE application. Look at what the OEE looks like, the home page for a specific uh, piece of equipment or plant is the waterfall diagram. Um, we, we start with a total time, that's between the periods that I've selected, the start and end times that I've selected. Um, and then uh, we have off time, that's some people call it lights out time. Uh, if we've got a plant, a, a factory that's running uh, between eight and five, and then they shut down the factory, uh, from five in the afternoon to eight in the morning would be off time. Um, then we've got uh, planned downtime and unplanned downtime. Now, traditional uh, downtime monitoring basically stops here. Maybe just a comment on the, I've, I've mentioned the difference between OEE and, and uh, down, uh, traditional downtime. Uh, in many plants on un unplanned downtime, if the downtime was caused by operations, for example, they didn't have feed for the plant, they didn't include that in availability calculation. With OEE, whether it's, we, whoever is responsible doesn't matter, unplanned downtime is included in when calculating the availability and that speaks to the comment that I made that it, uh, constant, it, it promotes a look at the team approach to its downtime. And then the things that OEE specifically adds is performance. So here we might have had a, a, a slowdown in the plant, so we didn't uh, run a target and finally it includes quality um, where we didn't produce a uh, product at the spec that's required, um, so we've had quality loss. Right, and then if I click on any one of these bars uh, in the waterfall diagram, it will take me to a more detailed analysis. Uh, so here we've got, for example, planned downtime, and it shows me all the reasons for that for the planned downtime in that time period, either in a donor diagram or in a bar graph, so that I can visually quickly see we, who, who, where is my bad actor so that I can concentrate on them. Uh, obviously, in this case, um, this is the one that we need to, to look at in more detail. It's interesting that here, lunch is the biggest problem. Right, so this concludes the discussion of downtime and OEE. Uh, now we're going to give a quick overview of Blue Lock Sheets, which is an electronic lock sheet application. Uh, we all know this kind of, of, of lock sheet where people have written and uh, often in illegible uh, handwriting uh, and I think many of us have been uh, in the control room on shift where the operator sits and say at uh, 8.30, he says, oh, I should have locked all the values at 8 and then he just guess what the values um, was going to be. Um, so uh, blue lock sheets have been developed as an application within uh, A1PE that provides electronic lock sheet functionality. The columns that are to be included uh, can be configured in a database um, and we'll see examples of the configuration data a little bit later. Uh, the data can be specified to come from a measurement and blue lock sheet, the blue lock sheet record will then automatically be populated from that measurement and we can specify to use the value 
or some aggregated value, for example, an average over uh, each period. And then users with appropriate security access uh, will be over to, uh, able to override the calculated value. Um, we might know that a specific flow meter is uh, out by a certain percentage and, and, and it can be manually overridden. Uh, we also allow for manual entries uh, if there is no measurement available. And then both numerical values and text values are allowed. Uh, the text values can either be from a drop-down list or it can be free text. We can select the start date and end date and uh, uh, the specific log sheet we want to look at. Uh, these will be the columns that we've configured. Um, uh, this one shows us the values uh, for each hour and then aggregated uh, the specified uh, way for each shift. And then if a value can be changed by the user, he can click on it and it will come up with this display. Uh, the calc value is the value that's been calculated automatically. Uh, if he enters a new value, uh, the new value will be put there. The value that was currently there will be put in old value and the use value will become new, the new value that is entered. Here we can see also that we can configure alarm limits, for example, which will change colors on the log sheet. So if it goes into a high or low alarm, um, it might go red or yellow. Uh, and here we've specified that this specific value must be an average. Right, and that concludes the section on delay logging and reporting and on electronic worksheets. Uh, I know I hand over back to any Jacobs for the next section. All right, thank you. Thank you, Johan. Um, so for just for the last uh, few minutes of, of the webinar, we want to uh, I want to introduce or just show you some of the the uh, how do we manage batch and continuous uh, data using the APRM? Um, I think it's one of the products that um, is actually very underutilized and it can bring a, a lot of value to, to customers. Um, so if we just um, look at why do we want to have Aspen uh, Production Record Manager? We then we just said earlier we have all the data in a centralized database. We can do a lot of integrated analysis. Um, we can look at certain patterns. We can search. We've combined the analysis. We can visualize the data and then we can analyze what's happening with our process. But all of this also um, needs time to be able to map the relevant data. And so what APRM is doing. It wants to reduce the time to investigate. How do we combine correlated data? Um, and it also wants us to be able to maybe look at the data in, in an overlay fashion uh, and compare this data from any source and make sure that the data is pulled in. And that this will enable us to be able to do some of the root cause uh, detection and analyze problems and, and, and delve deeper into it. We will also see that um, uh, batches um, in, it can, can be defined for batch processes and continuous batches uh, processes can be shifts, it can be crude runs. Maybe we want to have a look at certain uh, raw, raw material lots. Uh, you know, we want to maybe look at uh, batches, uh, specific batches that we consume, operating phases. Um, you will see I've got an example here that uh, later in the slides it can give us uh, just an example of what we want to do. So if we look at uh, just how do we want to put some context into our production data, uh, we want to provide uh, full context and we want to be able to overlay this data. We want to overlay our plan data with things like orders, qualities, um, combine that with maybe cost that's associated with uh, producing certain material. We want to also incorporate the quality data. 
relevant to this plant data and make it an easier way of to be able to track and understand this data. We also want to define possibly what is our ideal batch um, and set up uh, Aspen Golden Profiler to be able to monitor this process in real time. Uh, and then we want to also report on this batches. We want to define, compare, training this data and understand what is the uh, equations that's happening. Is there something that's happening on the process that can help us identify and how do we improve um, the process? So just looking at a bit of the definitions um, on, the pro uh, on how do we create uh, context into our production. Uh, we want to look at a specific uh, segment of production data, and that's normally defined with a certain start and end marker, um, like maybe a, a lot number or maybe a blend type. Um, a, sh a shift is a good example, especially for continuous processes. We can have furnace taps that we want to combine and make sure that from a certain point that it start up to a certain point at end that we can view the relevant data and describe in this segment. Um, one of the advantages is to be able to overlay your typical plant data, the lab data and equipment data and bacterial consumptions, and how we can then use all of this information to perform ad hoc analysis, implement uh, various uh, root cause analysis detections to be able to help us um, define and improve our processes. Just yes, um, uh, the record manager is um, following the S88 compliant uh, uh, st standard that we know. It's very flexible and powerful. Uh, it enables us to view certain uh, details in, in the batches. If you look here on the right hand side, I've got a certain batch that I wanted to uh, uh, have a start and an end time, and maybe I want to have some coming and a batch number and what product are we making. But for the different uh, operations within this batch, you will see this batch go through a, a certain uh, operations with different phases. And for all of these phases, we want to be able to track and trace and to be able to do KPI reporting and compliance reporting uh, on, on the systems. As an example, uh, just to help us to look at the, the trends that we want to look, uh, I've just put a, down a little chemical plant here that basically um, uh, consists of, of, of uh, raw material tanks, a mixer, reactor, and a product storage. So uh, our first three raw material, uh, which is marked there as ATC 101, is basically our liquid raw materials that we collect and then uh, with outlet valves from the three uh, raw material tanks which allow us to, to mix this material in, in, in the mixer. Um, the three raw materials are agitated in the mixer unit and then we've got a, an outlet valve for the mixer unit which then opens and admit the product to the reactor which in this case is marked here as uh, R301 which then begins uh, with the react phase. Um, when the product is in this um, reactor phase, it's subject to two heat treatments. And for these two heat treatments, we basically want to also track uh, certain characteristics. Um, and once on the, at the end of the second treatment, a vent valve is open, which is uh, in the reactor, then which allow the gases to escape and then get closed. With this uh, this operation, once it's closed, will then be able to conclude the re react phase of, of our process. Outlet valve from these reactor units is then uh, uh, enabling us to, uh, to produce or, or uh, move the material to the storage locations, which in this case here you see at the bottom here is uh, marked as uh, 401 to, to 3, uh, all of them with different grades. Um, so on, on the right hand side, you can see all these characteristics has been defined as a batch with the different phases. Here we've got a dump, mix, react. And for each of these uh, uh, operations phases, we also have different um, um, information that we want to capture at each step. Um, in APRN, you need to define what's your units that you uh, uh, are producing all these products and you want to have all the characteristics. Uh, so all of this is defined 
And basically here you can see there is the mixer of the reactor and then the storage tanks has been defined. Um, for each of the units, um, you can then define various aliases. Uh, you, you don't want to, in, in the, when looking at this data, know exactly what is the tag names. You want to be able to use alias names, for instance, like pressure and, and temperature here, irrespective of what's the tags uh, at, uh, behind all of this um, uh, aliases. Uh, this is just a, an example. So if I look at the next trend, you've got a, a means of being able to look at the single event. And a single event is where we want to display uh, process variables of uh, multiple process variables over across single batch. So here you can see, um, I've not shown it here, but uh, you will basically uh, select what's the latest batches that you want, and you will be driving it from A1PE uh, and select. So I've just selected the last 10 batches on a demo database that I have. And for this batches, I want to be able to look at our pressure, uh, reactor pressure and reactor temperature. So you will see if I go back to, to the previous process, I'm interested in the reactors uh, pressure and temperature for all of the batches. Uh, and that's what I've defined here. So if I look, go back to the trend here, oh, yeah, I'm just looking at the, uh, the standalone batches by clicking on the different batches here at the bottom, I will be able to see, see the trends. I can also uh, overlay these uh, events or process variables that we want to look at um, for a single process variable over multiple batches. Again, shown my last 10 batches and I've decided to overlay the temperature, the reactor temperature. Uh, and here you can see all the trends. So it gives me a means of, of identifying uh, if there's any outliners, if there's any problems uh, that, it, that I could uh, maybe draw down and have a look. Multiple events um, use, used to be able to give us uh, aggregated process variables and or characteristics. You will see earlier I've shown there were some characteristics uh, 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 along with the pressures and the temperature process variables. All of that can be used within this multiple event and here you can see Again, for the last 10 batches, uh, what is the time average for um, the temperature, which is the blue one, and the red one is showing off what is the time average uh, for the pressures. Um, very good way of being able to, to allocate and see what is happening uh, and if there was any outliners in, in our data. Also, um, if I want to look at some of the, the detail, uh, possible detail of the uh, batch details, uh, there's a batch detail display, and here you can see for this batch, uh, the same one that I showed you, we've got a mixer, reactor, and a dump. And uh, uh, with the real-time database that we pulled in the data, all of this uh, characteristics can now be viewed and be reported on, and this can now be shared between different applications as well. And then uh, not drilling too much into this here, but there's effectively some um, um, uh, uh, online reporting using uh, SSRS type reporting that you can use to drill down and, and Excel uh, or export the data to Excel and PDF uh, and to drill down. Um, so you can see as a final comment here, big drive towards uh, you at, uh, in the digital information journey uh, where we are basically combining the OT or converging the OT and IT. Uh, and I've shown you some of the examples here. Uh, next week, we will go into some of the meta accounting detail. Uh, but yeah, at, uh, so this is my last slide. At this point, I want to hand over to Daryl for the Q&A. Thank you, Daryl. Uh, Henny, thank you very much. Um, Wilhelm and I have been busy answering questions in the background to most of the questions. So. Most of you should have already received your answers, but just a, a few other ones we haven't gone through. Um, just can an operator receive a notification of downtime if the blue downtime event um, picks up something automatically or is, or is generated automatically? Johan? Yeah, um, there's uh, nothing stopping from us. Uh, Any has mentioned. Uh, notifications and alerts previously, and we can use that to uh, inform uh, a, a, a subscribed user of a specific event. 
Okay, thanks. And then um, in APRM, can we track planned versus actual production profiles, Henny? Sorry, um, yeah, yeah, yes, we can. The um, there's a lot of the characteristics that can be used to be able to track and compare. With this, actually, the the the, the golden profiler is um, exactly fit for that kind of tracking of uh, to making sure that whatever you are wanting to compare to a certain ideal batch, you can do it in real time. Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And then another one here. Can we execute calculations on a batch event? Yes, yes. Uh, so as part of the, um, and I've, uh, let me just see, I've done, but if I go back to some of the events that's happening here uh, earlier on, uh, all right, yeah, there's no, not in this, in the slide, I just took a part of it out, but yes, I can basically set up um, uh, calculations that is uh, uh, similar to any uh, Excel calculation that I can combine on any of the characteristics and process variables for that specific batch. Okay, um, I think that's pretty much it. I'm just conscious of time here. We're four minutes over. Um, maybe just one last one here. Is Blue Downtime a product or is it a kind of a plugin that just fits onto the, onto the Aspen Tech suite? Yeah, it, uh, it is basically a plugin into the Aspen Tech uh, software uh, because it uses A1PE as its uh, uh, user interface. Um, I don't know if that answers the question sufficiently. Yeah, I think so. Okay, I think let's leave it at that. Well, um, maybe, maybe uh, Daryl, then maybe I can just add that A1PE is not limited to the Aspen Tech uh, historian. Um, it specifically can interface to most other historians as well. So the uh, A1PE is available to be used, but then it can interface to others. Okay, thanks. Insightful. Okay, I think we'll leave it there. Um, any other questions, if anything we need to know, please contact us. And then we're just going to hand it back over to Wilhelm just to close out for us. And thank you, everyone. Well, Adam, you're on mute. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Thank, thanks, Eddie. Uh, thanks, Johan, for a great presentation and for preparation. And like, I think everybody could see that there's many years worth of experience there between the two guys, you know, really been been in the MES world for, you know, 20 plus years and, and have various local and international um, MES solutions basically deployed. So they're not just talking about it all the things that you saw today is running, you know, and it's uh, we can show you or they can show you multiple applications where it's running, trialed and tested, being enhanced. And, you know, so we have various clients um, all around the world on this type of technologies already. So, you know, normally we approach a project with a functional design specification and then uh, make it quite fle flexible for the teams to then, you know, uh, um, customize their requirements to exactly what they need. So like Daryl said, and thank you, Daryl, for also hosting the event and doing the Q&A and, and that. And like I said at the beginning, this event is being re is being recorded. So if you go back to the link uh, tomorrow, tonight, whatever, you can watch the recording, you know, page up and down. You can share it with other people. You'll get a little email afterwards again, you know, and just to remind you also that you can share with other people and if they want to watch it as well. There were some questions about, um, you know, some of the other technologies about Pro MV, the multivariate analysis as well. So, you know, you can go back to last week's event as well on, you know, any of these dates and go and watch that as well. Um, make sure that you, you know, uh, also register for next week's event. So next week we're continuing with the higher order MS functionalities and going more into metal accounting, mass balancing, you know, water balancing um, and also enterprise reporting, uh, enterprise operational reporting. So, so really you would basically be wanting to, um, you know, join us for that session as well. We're continuing with MES training, um, you know, the whole time as well. So virtual training or or e-learning is still very, very active. So really, um, 
let us know if you if you want to get more exposure or want to do some self study at home on some of these technologies you know and i think the last comment is our MES consultants engineers are ready to chat to you so send us a note and we'll set up a dedicated session with either one of the engineers or one of the sales guys just to talk through your requirements on exactly what you need I really want to thank you again for making the time and to taking the time to listen us for this hour or slightly over an hour right now. And we look forward to see you again at next week's event. You know, all the event afterwards, like on the first week of August, we're also focusing very much on constraint simulation um, and, you know, how to build a digital twin for a specific plant. So even that uh, with Yaku and with Willem Darling um, is going to be very exciting, um, you know, coming up. So, so we hope to see you in some of the other events. Uh, thank you.